Hello, scaredy cats. It's me, Scaredy Matt. It's time for me to submit to the braying masses. It's time for me to give in and finally talk about brain damage. I've held out long enough. The calls for me to watch this movie have finally gotten to such a fevered pitch that I can no longer ignore them. I fear for the safety of me and my family if I continue to neglect this movie. Brain Damage, a film that needs no introduction, but just in case you're one of the two or three people who might not have heard of it, it's a 1988 movie directed by Frank Kennenlauter, the director of Basket Case, the second film in the Basket Case cinematic universe. It tells the story of Brian, which sounds like brain, and I just got that, an ordinary young man in New York City who becomes the victim of a parasite which secretes a chemical which produces LSD-like visuals and intense euphoria, but also the parasite eats human brains. It's a horror comedy, and what it lacks in scares, it also lacks in, in laughs. Brain damage belongs to my favorite subgenre of movies. Longtime fans will know that I like movies about wet puppets. Put a wet puppet in a movie, and I'm there, baby. Whether it's The Ghoulies, or Society, or Terror Vision, or indeed Basket Case, I love a good old fashioned wet puppet movie. And few movies have as wet a puppet as brain damage, in the form of Elmer, the brain eating parasite. Side note, since I know there's a few pedants in my audience who will complain, I know that it's not pronounced Elmer, it's Aylmer. The movie goes out of its way to tell you that his name is Aylmer. Elmer, Aylmer, A-Y-L-M-E-R. An old English word meaning the all-inspiring famous one, and that he is indeed. For the but aside from that scene where they say that, he's always called Elmer. Like, he's called Elmer in the credits of the movie, so that's what I'm gonna call him. Anyway, Elmer is the star attraction as far as I'm concerned. First of all, look at him. Just look at this fucking thing. Look at him doing this, all these jiggly little teeth. Are those teeth supposed to scare me? You can see him wobble and jiggle. Okay, so this creature is a parasite of unknown origin that's been manipulating people from behind the scenes for centuries. A being of immense power once worshipped as a god. Take a moment to think about what you think his voice sounds like. Just look at him, think what you think his voice might be like, and was it this? It's always winking and blinking above. What makes a fella start thinking of falling in love? It's not the season. The reason is plain as a moon, it's just Elmer's tune. Elmer is a cackling, gleeful little shit. He just likes being a parasite that eats brains. That's his thing and he fucking loves it. Hey, wanna know something weird? The voice actor for Elmer is uncredited. So I looked it up and he's played by Zachary, the legendary horror host. That's as close to a celebrity as you're gonna get in a Frank Henenlotter film and he didn't even credit him. Frank Ennenlauter tends to cast unknown actors who then continue to be unknown actors long afterwards. The actors in a Ennenlauter movie's performances, much like Ennenlauter's movies as a whole, are more charmingly idiosyncratic than skilled. Brain Damage is a retread of Basket Case in a lot of ways. Both center on the story of a likable everyman forced to care for a murderous puppet. But while Belial was a sympathetic underdog, Elmer is a sadistic monster. Both take place in New York, Basket Case takes place in a sleazy hotel, and so does about a third of brain damage. Dwayne and Belial even have a brief cameo, and Dwayne has a crazy wig, and so does Beverly Bonner. I mean, she makes a cameo. So she doesn't have a crazy wig. That'd be great. She doesn't. She played Casey in the original Basket Case. She's there too. She's in all of Frank Ann and Lauder's movies. But where I think Brain Damage fails is in the way it doesn't really explore the lives of its characters in the same way that Basket Case did. It's difficult to invest in Brian's suffering because before he's attacked by a psychedelic brain-eating parasite, something that most of us cannot relate to, we know virtually nothing about him. He has a girlfriend, he lives with his brother, who is in love with his girlfriend. That's it, that's all. None of the characters really do much except react to the zany situation they find themselves in. You get some sneak peeks of that hen and lotter difference. Like when this biker and his pal are having an extended discussion about the arms race for no real reason. The newspapers, you listen to the TV news, talking about nuclear waste, talking about nuclear bombs, nuclear war. <laughs> They're crying all over the place. Or this extremely jacked dude being really nice to Brian in the shower. Hey man, you new here? 
You okay? Yeah. Hey, it's cool. What's gonna bother you? But that hen and lauder difference, it's a double-edged sword, because you also get the bad sides. Like an extremely long and extremely uncomfortable sexual assault joke that caused the crew to walk off set, a thing which also happened during the filming of Basket Case. But it's a lot worse than this one, just really needless. There's a weird sexual energy to the whole movie, actually. Brian quickly gets addicted to Elmer's brain juice, and it seems to give him some sort of sexual release. Elmer gives him the juice by penetrating the back of his neck with a, like a needle-like appendage that comes out of his mouth and squirting fluid into his brain. Sometimes he pushes Brian up against a wall while Brian moans in pleasure. Sometimes he tells Brian he's going to make him beg for the juice or crawl across the floor like a dog. Sometimes Elmer is Brian's penis. Hennenlotter based a lot of elements of the story on his own struggles to quit cocaine, which is probably why the film is weirdly quite sensitive to the plight of drug addicts. The brain juice is fun at first, but very quickly becomes an all-consuming aspect of Brian's life. He stops leaving the house, stops going to work, gets extremely paranoid about his privacy, and drives away his girlfriend. When Brian becomes aware that Elmer is killing people, he tries to quit taking the brain juice, but he goes into this brutal withdrawal that he can't overcome. Eventually, he resigns himself to the fact that he's just going to have to kill people to get the brain juice, and he uses the brain juice to numb the feeling of guilt that he gets from having to kill people, creating a vicious cycle that he can't escape. So he tries to cut the people he cares most about out of his life, so they won't be the ones that he ends up killing. But try as he might, the people he cares about end up getting hurt anyway. And eventually, Brian dies of an overdose. And this, this is... it's... I'm making the movie sound maudlin. It, once again, it is about an evil puppet that shoots drugs into people's brains. But nowhere is this presented as a moral failing on Brian's part. Nothing he did led him down this tragic path. Just the bad luck of attracting Elmer in the first place. He's an average guy, like the film's poster reminds us. It's just happenstance that this happened to him. He didn't deserve it. And Brian does what he can to stop this chain of events. He goes farther than most people would be willing to, but in the end, the drug wins. Brain Damage is not a good movie. Not even on the curve I'd normally grade a Hennenlotter film on. It drags really bad in some parts, probably because the original cut of the movie was only 66 minutes long, and they had to add back in footage that really didn't serve any purpose. The characters are all one note, and aside from a few notable exceptions, the acting is wooden and uninteresting. The effects are awful, but that's actually kind of a draw. They're charmingly awful. Like, they're awful in a fun way. But let's be honest here. This isn't the type of movie you watch on recommendation. You've either already decided to watch it, or nothing could convince you to watch it. I enjoyed it, mostly, but I think it's safe to say that this type of thing isn't for everyone. Not everyone shares my passion for wet puppets. This is probably not a good date movie. Unless your date's cool as hell. It, it, if you take someone home and they don't want to watch brain damage, don't have sex with them. Can't even, can't even say it with a straight face. All of that being said, you're not going to find a wetter puppet than this. There, I've done it. I've fulfilled my contractual obligation to talk about the film Brain Damage. I know it took me a long time. How could I call myself a horror movie YouTube channel when I'm not even talking about the most popular horror movie of all time, 1988's Brain Damage? But I have now. You can all get off my back about it. Release the hostages. And because I know people are going to ask, and I assume people are going to ask this, uh, no, I'm not going to ever be talking about Frankenhooker. Fuck that. Fuck that movie. No.